gentlemen, I'm Seb, and welcome to the official Valve published op guide. I'm gonna be totally honest with you, this video took me a while to make, but not because I've been working hard on it. I've been tied up beta testing Counter-Strike 2, which Valve hand-selected me to do. That's right, the developers know I'm not just any Silver 4 clown, and yeah, the game's pretty fun. Oh. He was right, look, you were gonna die anyway. So, in this video, I'm gonna be using both CSGO and CS2 to demonstrate how to use the op. The AWP is one of the strongest weapons in CSGO when it's used right, but it's completely useless when it's used wrong, and let me tell you, most people are using it wrong. I guarantee watching this video will give you global elite, maybe even pro level, AWP skills. No! <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm a demon. I looked up, can you skin a human alive today? Just sit here and suck each other off, that boy. I'm taking no over 60. 60? Why are my shots registering? Let me ace! He's Alright, before we talk about how to actually use the AWP, I'm gonna show you how to get one every round. And yeah, you heard me right, every round. An AWP is a big investment, $4,750, so you won't always be able to afford one. But I've found a way to circumnavigate this. I'll start by demonstrating. Blue, draw me up. Fuck off, bitch. Draw me your AWP or I'll kill you. Drop me an AWP or I'll kill you. Just asking a teammate to drop you an op will almost never work. Drop me up. Sure, sometimes the stars will align and if you ask drop me an op, someone will do it. But this is extremely rare. Instead, you should threaten him. Yo, Blue, buy me an op or I'll kill you. If he doesn't buy me an op, I'm gonna team kill him and he'll have to sit out for the entire round. Nobody wants that, so logically, he'll just buy me an op. Yo, Blue, buy me an op or I'll kill you. <laughs> Give me that op. Give me the no, up. I Did saved the money for this. <laughs> FaZe Clan is one of the most recognizable names in the gaming industry. But what if I told you there was a forgotten FaZe member? A FaZe founder? A highly influential trick shotter who was unfairly cut out of the organization and erased from FaZe history for mysterious, unknown reasons? That's right, it was me, FaZe Seb. Trickshotting is simply one of the most effective ways to use the op. If you're standing still, holding an angle, you're an easy target, you'll just die. You have to be elusive, unpredictable, if you really want to get the most out of your $4,750. A trick shot can mean a lot of things. If you boil it down to the simplest level, it can just be a no-scope, but to get the best results, you're gonna want to be moving erratically, doing 360s and jumping and shit to catch people off guard and make yourself extra unpredictable. Oh, I'm sorry. Please don't get mad at me. I don't know. I don't... With trickshotting out of the way, we can cover more opping fundamentals. Let me ask you something. Of these two examples, which target is easier to hit? Exactly. The one on the right, because he's a bigger target. It seems obvious, but the bigger someone is on your screen, the easier they are to hit. I mean, look at this, it's impossible to miss. So I started thinking, would it be possible to make my target so big that I could just never miss? And it sounds crazy, but... The answer is yes. Go into your settings and select 1000 by 2000 stretched red. Exiting narrow Exiting narrow Exiting narrow Have I gone too far? Maybe. This could even be considered borderline cheating because I haven't missed a single shot since I started using these settings. Let's do a comparison. If I'm looking at someone who's about 10 feet away from me, look how he looks normally, a relatively easy shot to hit, but now, if I change my resolution, it's practically impossible to miss. I don't know if this is some kind of game-breaking exploit that Valve has to patch, but this is overpowered. To be honest, I'm very concerned about the future of this game because of what I'm showing you. But regardless, even if it makes the game too easy, and even if it's ethically questionable, 1000 by 2000 stretched resolution is the key to opping at the highest level. Is anybody gonna cover balcony? <laughs> He's arches. Balcony. Arches? Where's arches?
All right, now that you've seen the optimal techniques and settings for the op, I'm gonna show you how to actually apply what I've taught you so far and combine it with genius strategy and global elite game sense. I'm holding B-Sight with one other teammate, who's just some silver who probably won't be of much use. I start by throwing a smoke into B-Main to slow a potential push, but this didn't phase them. I hear the entire enemy team's footsteps rushing towards me on the other side of the wall, so I run into my smoke. You may think this is dumb, but now I'm the last place that they would ever expect me to be right next to them. While I'm hiding here, I'm listening to their footsteps to pinpoint exactly where all of them are. I don't have a face cam, but my eyes were actually closed while I was doing this. I can hear that most of them have already pushed out, and one is on the box. With this knowledge, I pounce an easy no- an easy no-scope. Like a moth to a flame, another pushes me, and that's the bomb down. They can't plant. I single-handedly stuff that entire rush with only a smoke grenade, an op, and my intellect. Pushing mid on Mirage is one of the most common situations you can find yourself in with an op, so I'm gonna show you how I push from mid to underpass to B. I open with a quick kill on the guy nest, and then start pushing up mid. At this point, I'm worried about someone peeking me connector, so I throw down a molly to block it off and safely run to underpass is what you thought I'd do. I run through my own molly and find a CT completely clueless on stairs. He thought because there was a molly down connector, nobody would push him. Using that false sense of security, I tricked him and caught him off guard. With him dead, our team has complete control over A, and it was all because of my mind games. Now, this final gameplay example is extremely complex, so you might not understand it the first time you watch it, and that's okay, but it's also a prime example of a strategic, well thought out op play. You can see I'm starting out in mini with an M4. I know it's not an op, but bear with me. I swing out and get one kill outside and then go back to check A. After finding out nobody's there, I realize they must be pushing outside. So I go back to mini and- You really thought that was my POV? This unrefined play, the reckless peaks? You probably didn't catch it, but this guy's fatal mistake was right here. I'll explain. After his first kill, this guy doesn't peek again, so I reasonably assumed that he'd went to check A, but on my mini map, I can see that none of my teammates are around that area. Knowing this, I figured to check A, come back, and swing outside again would take him about 5.11 seconds. So at 4.96 seconds, he'd be right here, still on his way to peek. At this point, I can't see him, there's a wall between us, but I know exactly where he's gonna be and when. So all I have to do is point and shoot. It's that simple. Of course, this play is only possible because I've spent tens of thousands of hours mastering every aspect of this game.